Hello and welcome to the JISC Psychology Podcast Series. I'm Dr. Keon West and I'll be talking to you today about how far social identity theory explains prejudice. Now in order to talk about that, I'll have to talk about a few things first. First I'll have to define prejudice, say what prejudice is, and then I'll have to talk about what social identity theory is. After that I will then apply social identity theory to prejudice, so use what we know from social identity theory to explain prejudice as we know it. And then lastly I'll cover what social identity theory doesn't cover. Most people think that's a very easy question, and it does seem like an easy question. When you ask people what is prejudice, most people will give you an example. They'll probably give you an example of some kind of race-based inequality like apartheid in South Africa, or some kind of gender-based inequality, situations in which women are prevented from working, or women are not allowed to do some of the same things as men. But those are just examples, and they don't actually define prejudice. They don't actually tell us what prejudice is. And this lack of definition becomes much more apparent when we move on to questions that are not so easy. So once you start to tackle the harder questions, the more difficult questions, it becomes clear that you may or may not have a very good working definition of prejudice. I'll give you a few examples. Do you think that people who've been imprisoned for a crime should be allowed to vote in any election, whether it's national or local? And I raise a question not because I'm going to tell you how I feel about whether or not they should vote, but just to point out that it is a topic of conversation. Some people think that they should be allowed to vote, and some people think that they shouldn't. Is preventing them from voting a form of prejudice? And so here's another question. Do you think that people who are of the same sex, who love each other, should be allowed to marry each other, in the same way that people who are of the opposite sex, who love each other, are allowed to marry each other now? Again, I won't tell you what I think about the issue, but I'm just pointing it out because it is clearly still a topic of conversation. Some people think that they should be allowed to get married, and some people think that they shouldn't. So is it prejudice, then, to deny them the ability to get married? So we see from looking at these two questions that actually it's not as clear-cut as we'd like to imagine when we talk about what prejudice is and what prejudice isn't. So if we're going to actually try and define prejudice, I'll suggest three ways that are well-known and well-discussed in the psychological literature to help us understand what prejudice is. And these things we'll be looking at group-based perceptions or treatment, questions of fairness, and questions of privilege. We'll tackle them one after the other.